What's up, guys? Jordan here. Today, I've got a very special interview lined up for you. We're going to be joined by Lucas from Hamby Media, who's a member of the Athlete Academy. We actually interviewed him 12 months ago on the channel after he had just lost his entire client base at the start of lockdown. Now, he's since managed to scale his agency back up from the ground to over 40K a month. And he's built an amazing team. He's got an incredible company culture and I cannot wait for him to reveal his secrets to you all today. But before we get into it, I want to announce that tonight, Tuesday, the 23rd of November at 7 p.m. GMT, that's UK time, I'm going to be hosting a completely free live Q&A on my Instagram, okay? It's at Jordan Platinum. We'll put it up on screen. Now, I'm going to answer any questions that you may have about our upcoming launch of the Affluent Academy 2022, which is coming up on Friday. And of course, if we've got time, we'll go through any agency-related questions that you may have lingering as well. So make sure you are there. I cannot wait to speak to all of you. Now, I've got a bunch of incredible content lined up for you over the next week. This has been a long time coming. So if you're not subscribed to my channel already, make sure you subscribe with your notification bell turned on so you do not miss out on the content that I have coming up for you all. And yeah, I'll see you all tonight. Let's get into the interview. What's up, guys? Jordan here. Today, we're joined by Athlon Academy member Lucas Hamby, who owns Hamby Media. I'm sure you recognize the name because Lucas has done a lot of video work with me in the past. I consider him a very good friend, but also someone who has really set the way um, and this new standard for many things agency. Um, now, me and Lucas first did an interview on YouTube 12 months ago. Uh, at this point, he's 4 x his revenue in 12 months. So, Pretty solid progression. We're going to dive into that, things that he's doing differently, company culture and all that fun stuff. Uh, but firstly, Lucas, thank you for being here, mate. Um, now, for the benefit of everyone who hasn't watched the previous video, could you give us a bit of an intro as to yourself and kind of who you are and what you do? Yeah, so uh, thank you for having me, Jordan. It's always uh, good to chat. Um, yeah, so my name's Lucas, as Jordan mentioned, uh, owner of Hobby Media. We did an interview here at this time last year. So we kind of went through a, um, a phase during lockdown where we lost almost all of the business. I was at a point before that where I was kind of just floating along around the 5K month. Mm. Mark. And then that kind of, you know, spiraled me into, you know, unease almost when that happened. And, you know, that being uncomfortable kind of really drove me to push the agency forward. So, um, yeah, then we've just gone from strength to strength. We're con content marketing design and um you know digital marketing focus i kind of the way i describe it is that we kind of bridge the gap between creative and marketing uh, online amazing love it and you guys i mean you you've got such a a good brand that you've built and i want to i want to move on to that like later on in this but um can we just recap just for for the benefit of everyone else so like you you went through a position in lockdown like so essentially when a pandemic happened where you lost all of your client base and essentially had to rebuild that from scratch. Now, many people, like 90% of people, like and most people I know who, who would go through that actually wouldn't continue on. But funny enough, there's there's multiple people I know that went through that position. Yourself, Adam Powell, almost like had a situation like that. Um, and someone else I spoke to this morning as well, but someone else in the academy. So many people went through that and those people really come out way stronger than they did beforehand. I imagine it's because of like, the mental barriers you had to push through. But what was what was that like? Did that take a lot of strength to have to rebuild everything? Yeah, to an extent. I think, to be honest, like I said, I just got way too comfortable where I was. And, you know, it was it's the cliche, but it was like a blessing in disguise in many ways. I think, you know, when you're coasting along at that level and you're comfortable, um, you know, that, that can be dangerous. I think, you know, you need to put yourself in uncomfortable situations, whether that be through work, whether that be uh, personal life, you know, that... I've since had the kind of motto that every day you should do something uncomfortable, whether that be calling that person that you don't necessarily want to, or, you know, putting yourself in, a, in, a, in an uncomfortable position. But yeah, it was, it was difficult at first. It was just weird. I think, you know, what, what made it slightly more reassuring was that I felt like everyone was going through a similar situation. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, yeah, it, it was, it was a difficult time. Um, I took a couple of weeks. I think the, the thing that I did, potentially quite well I felt was just took a few weeks to kind of sit back and look take a bit of breathing space not panic mm -hmm. and look assess it from a slightly outside perspective rather than being in the trenches you know I took myself away from it for probably two three weeks um you know doing almost anything 
um, related to the business and just assess the situation. And then I kind of, you know, looked at what I could do during the times, how I could use my unfair advantages and, um, you know, how I could, you know, do, take the most out of the situation, really. Yeah, sure. um, I, I suppose it's a good chance for you to, like, strip everything back as well and like realize maybe some of the things you were doing before that weren't so efficient and just like do the stuff that you enjoy and that you know works because you then scaled up like quicker than you'd ever scale like beforehand so like so you you must have learned a lot in that situation like that, 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 that kind of made that change happen yeah definitely i just went way more aggressive with it and it's not always the right thing to do like scaling too quickly is like a known thing that's not that can 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 backfire yeah. but it kind of i really like you know believed after that point that putting myself in uncomfortable situations will really trigger me to you know drive myself forward so you know I we were on we got it back I got the got it back to 5k a month revenue by September time when we were, just came out of that first lockdown yeah and you know around 5k revenue you'd probably think that's not in a position to bring on your first employee yeah but I met the right person at the right time who I felt could you know be a big part of the business in the future yeah. and you know, even though I could literally just about afford his wage, my wage and the outgoings, I brought him on and knew that we had enough in the bank to cover us for three months, even mm -hmm. if he didn't bring in any business. He was leading up a lot of the sales side as a head of growth role. But yeah. putting it, us in that situation, it was kind of that make or break. And you knew you had to we had to kind of really push ourselves because we were in an uncomfortable spot. We couldn't lay back. We couldn't get complacent. And that really helped. Yeah, for sure. I think I think one thing I've always like, admired about the way you've grown your, your agency is you've you've never been afraid to 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 scale the the team and the, and the actual business itself. I think a lot of agencies are so conscious of always staying like a stupid margin, like a ninety percent margin or whatever. And like like with every time you have scaled your business revenue, you've like built the team. You're you're getting a new office coming up. And we'll, we'll talk about that. So like. Just so everyone knows, can you paint the picture? So, like when we last had an interview, it was yourself and Hector, who's Hector is is is, is essentially in charge of all your sales, isn't he? So yourself yeah, and growth. Yeah. And so now what what's changed within the last 12 months when it comes to team and things like that? Yeah. So there was someone that I, you know, was it was on the same film course at me as me at uni that I knew was incredibly talented. I knew he worked in television and kind of didn't enjoy what he was doing there. And I, I really kind of pushed to get him as the next next employee. Uh, then I knew that, you know, getting the sales side, you know, sorted with Hector was great, but then we needed to really double down on delivery. Mm. So since that point when Hector joined from January until I think it was August, we brought on the next four or five members of staff. Um, you know, Molly, who's our head of design, Fred, who's the head of content. Um, and then again, the, the, the Chris, who is, is kind of head of marketing. The whole point of that bringing in those pillars was because, you know, I want those guys to be the leaders of their, their individual yeah. sections of the business for then us to be able to then build their teams below them. So kind of establishing those core pillars of the business was key for me Yeah. Um, for then us to be able to scale that accordingly once you know we have the right people in place in those areas um, and then we've kind of brought on a few kickstarter people since that as well so yeah. we're currently sitting at eight people um oh, in the team yeah that's big that's big so so what can you can you explain to people what it, what a kickstarter is we're talking about this before so but this is this for, for for uk based agencies it's definitely an opportunity i think people should should certainly look into. Can you explain what a Kickstarter is? Yeah, so it's a government scheme that came about as a result of uh, COVID, where basically it's a way of helping people get back into employment. Um, so what people, uh, what the government have done, they basically, if you are a business and you, uh, you know, want want to uh, recruit a new person, if they're um you, you can basically sign up to the kickstarter scheme the government will help find you people that are struggling to find employment themselves mm -hmm. they will pay for their salary for up to 25 hours a week mm -hmm. and you'll get i think it's about 1200 pound grant from the government as well in return for you training someone up who maybe before that point wasn't necessarily the most employable person but mm -hmm. but had potential to be uh, and helping them become more employable in in the outside world and that that is a six month scheme and then at the end of that you either decide if you want to offer them a full time contract or whether you know it's not right for them but at least they've got some incredible experience and training out of it 
yeah, that's it's such a big opportunity, especially for agencies who like maybe don't even have the the, the revenue yet to, to take on someone like agencies that are doing content writing and scheduling, no brainer, hire a Kickstarter. So if you want to train someone on ads, again, like as long as they've got the right attitude, you can train someone to do ads. Like it's yeah. it's it's a bit of a no brainer. If you if you're if you're an if you're a UK based agency, like I, I I remember saying to you before, like if we hadn't got the team that we've got now, I would definitely be looking into getting a Kickstarter. Yeah. um but like at the minute it's harder we, as well though when it's you know with with your agency the way the remote. model remote it's so much harder when they're not there in front of you like i couldn't imagine a, you know doing it as well if if yeah. if they weren't there you know with us but i guess the other thing just i think people could get value from is um uh you know when you're hiring these people in the kickstarter scheme look for look for you know their personality look for the person rather than their skills because sometimes we can't see past that but you can't train mindset like if someone has the right you know mindset then, then you can teach them the other stuff yeah 100 percent. i couldn't agree more with that so you've you i mean you're, you're the king of company culture you've got you've got a great company culture but i imagine that's not an, an easy thing to to build and to maintain one thing that I always fear with, and one thing that's always prevented me from necessarily wanting to get an office. Yeah, I think we will in the future. I mean, for now, we'll, we'll stick to the virtual shit. But, <laughs> um, but I, I think that one thing that I always fear is when you hire more people and you're in an office, like there's distractions and your personal productivity drops. So you, you like, I think people think, oh, if I get to an employee, then it means my productivity in the business doubles. And it actually doesn't end up being that case because no one ever works as hard as you do. And yeah. also you've got distractions. So how have you found battling that? Have you found that you've got less productive? Is it quite hard to manage the team and also manage your own workload? Like how does that happen? Yeah. So again, one thing I've always wanted, even from, you know, coming up through affluent and learning from you was I always, I always wanted to have that in-house model. And again, there's no right or wrong, but I absolutely loved, uh, you know, with people working with people. Mm. I love the, you know, I, I was inspired by my granddad who had um, a graphic design agency. And again, they had an amazing culture, like the average employee was there for like 20 years. Nice. Great things. And like, I just love that idea of like building a family um, and, you know, it's, it is difficult, but I think, you know, if you're going to do it, look at how you can just give back and be like empathetic to everyone. And, you know, don't worry about the, the bottom line profit, the, you know, in the short term, because you're trying to build a family and you're trying to buy people's trust and not buy people's trust, but earn their trust. Yeah. You know, so do fun things, you know, give back to people, you know, we would do, you know, incentives all the time. I know we spoke about the delivery one. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we have like a spin the wheel thing that we do where if you do, it's either a small win or a big, big win, you know, you post it on the Slack channel and then you get a spin on the wheel and the wheel has different prizes, you know, up to like a, you know, nothing crazy, but like a 70 pound voucher or you could get, you know, your lunch bought for you or, yeah. um, so it's what's nice about that is you're giving back to the team. It makes things a bit more interesting and exciting, but as well, it makes great content when you then, you know, document it through your social. So I think culture not only is a great vehicle for building uh, an incredible team and foundation and family, but yeah. it is also, if you use it correctly, can be incredible content for your own agency yeah. to put online. And that's, yeah, that's something that I'd say about it. So, so uh, guys, first of all, you should definitely go follow Lucas and Hamby Media on on TikTok, Instagram, and whatever platforms you guys are using. I'll put some links in the description. But because they're a great example of building a great agency brand, um, and 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 I think it's, uh, some. I mean, on on the outside, it looks great. But like, how how does that reflect to actually the business growth? Like, do you think that the the brand has a really has a positive impact on sales? Like, what's what's the score? I mean, I know, I know the answer because I know what it's like for us. <laughs> but like, what's and how, from from yours firsthand, like, do you feel that impact that the brand has? Yeah, massively. I mean, there's two sides to it. It's like the what you get from inbound leads when you're building your own kind of brand and community online. That you know what you get through that. And then you know, there's the side where you, when you're speaking to clients and you're leading by example, and you can firsthand show them that you are doing what you you want to do for their brand. Mm. You know, when you're doing that, then then that says it all. And I feel like if, you know, in, if you're running a social media agency or a digital agency, you should be doing digital right yourself first before you before you look at, you know, doing it right for other clients. And yeah. it's a great selling point and a, a great 
way to leverage. I mean, just being completely honest, though, like this is what I've really found difficult. You know, we were doing it so well, um, you know, six months ago. But mm. as like the team have grown and as, you know, we've become more stretched, like I, I'm i even guilty of saying, and again, when we uh, move into our new office in a few months, uh, sorry, next month, that will change. But we've been guilty of like, you know, dropping down our uploads to a couple of weeks. Like we've been very on and off with the TikTok and not doing so much of that. And I've noticed a big difference with the amount of inbound leads right. as a result of that. You know, when you take your foot off the gas, it does make a real difference, which showed how actually how effective it was when we were doing it, you know, as consistently as we were. We almost need it as like a responsibility of someone in the team to be like, they need to come up with X amount of ideas per week. And it's like, it almost takes that stress away from everyone else. Yeah. Well, what we've just started doing, and this was actually one of the ideas that one of the uh, our new employees had, one of the Kickstarters, but was that because when you're just kind of thinking individually for ideas and, you know, it can be a bit of a mess, a bit of a scramble. But what we've actually started doing as of December is putting a content day in, an internal content day where the whole team come together for a whole day, you know, put work aside and we internally come up with content, whether that be, you know, a designer coming up with full design posts, giving value to designers over the course of the next month, or we film a certain amount of TikToks, or we're creating content just internally in a large batch over the course of a day, all as a team to then, you know, put out over that next month. Um, and it just means you get a real focus on, you know, that internal content as, as a team. Yeah, hundred percent. It's a great shout. Yeah, just getting everybody together, and then you can you can you can benefit from everyone's minds instead of just yeah, just one. Well, yeah. So if, if let's say let's say somebody um it has got an agency already, maybe they're looking to to hire their first team members, and they they kind of they kind of um aware of brand. Actually, not even like having team members at this point. Like talk, just talking brand wise for the for the agency. What do you think? Are like some really important things that people need to bear in mind when they're designing the brand of their agency or maybe even just thinking about what kind of messaging they want to get across like as an agency owner what do you think are some of the keys yeah so i think firstly you need to have you know we've got something called a hammy media stone of life and it's like three or so key values that your company uh, you know abide by and you know that you want to reflect on the rest of the team and you want to train them in and um you know just as an example um go above and beyond is like one of our big ones you know go go further than just your day-to-day -day job and do more than just the day-to-day -day. um once you kind of establish that you know you can build a brand around that mm -hmm. i think as well in terms of like more specifics of of the design you know i think ada is a format that we use attention interest desire and then action um through the posts so you know the first one there attention you need a key and recognizable brand figure or brand asset that that kind of links your brand together whether that be a color scheme whether that be you know a character you know we've got the you know we our key thing is that we have like these uh, we 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 have a play on you know well-known ca ca cartoon characters that are nostalgic to people's childhood so mm -hmm. we'll get say harry potter or dumbo or homer simpson and we'll like put my my <laughs> my face and nose and <laughs> my the skin fade on on yeah. him and it's like a, a mini series that we do but that's like become a known thing that drives attention for the content that we create so i think like look outside of you know, a lot of agencies and a lot of kind of digital uh, companies fall into the same box and all, all kind of have a similar look and feel. But if you can do something that gains that attention and is that distinctive brand asset that is different to others, it will really make you stand out because that is drives the attention into the interest that then you you build um, that that desire through yeah, the content. I think I, th I think it's really important that like what you've executed or what you've showed is that like you really have to just be yourself through your brand like i think a lot of people like build their brand based on what they see my brand is what they see someone else's brand is and like we have a like a culture of copying and i think i think equally right it's not it's not super important but when before you're making like your first like six figures whatever right if you're making like when you're making like eight nine k or whatever then really start to think about your brand but before that point you really just need to focus on on, on sales and we'll, we'll, i want to come on to a few bits because i think there's a couple of things that you've done quite differently as well on sales but 
Um, I think that ultimately is something that people really need to think about when they have already established their, their business a bit and have already got clients. Um, and I think that I think it's something not to be forced. I think it's something that comes quite naturally. Like our the, the brand of Affluent and our like obsession with results and kind of being a quite a, a quite a strong revenue money driven kind of brand that kind of came from actually just servicing clients and realizing the thing we enjoyed the most yeah. was actually making them a ton of cash. Like we love the calls. Me and Joe love the calls when a client messaged us and they're sending us like messages like, what the hell am I going to do with all these orders? Like, oh my God, like we're going to scale this. We're going to do this. We're going to like, and it just, I love, I love that, that rush of like seeing yeah. someone go from 1K a month to 1K a day. And then it's like that, that, that emotion frenzy of like them, their life changing. And that's what like, we love. So it's like becoming affluent and all that. And so that's, and don't get me wrong. There's certainly things that we can we can improve on on our, on our culture side of things, and actually relaying that message. But I think finding the brand is something that you stumble across once you've actually started doing it. But there'll be a lot of people equally who are watching this video right now who aren't even at that point yet, who are like still like getting clients. In fact, the majority, 99% of people, I imagine, are still trying to get by their first client. Maybe got one or two clients. Um, and there's a couple of things that you did differently when, when, when you, but certainly just towards me, like when we, when we first started working together, because I know that, um, I mean, Lucas has done many video projects for myself and on his YouTube channel over the years, We've done content, like uh, image based content for our clients as well, like a whole bunch of different collaborative work. But the in with me and Lucas was he offered to do a free video, essentially for, 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 for my, for my YouTube channel it was actually the launch of affluent wasn't it and you're already in the academy at this point weren't you but you yeah do you want, do you want, to, do you want to explain it because i'll probably explain that story no before. no yeah so like that was the thing it was you know i realized that you know jordan was this figure and i'd learned a lot from him but again you know he has a big academy there's there's a lot of people within it and i wanted to see how because again it's like if i want to get value from someone you know, I feel like rather than asking, you need to come to them with a value offer, you know, value in return for value. And I looked at how could I offer Jordan value in return for, you know, us building relationship. Because again, a lot has come from off the back of that. And I knew mm -hmm. that positive things would come off the back of, of building that relationship. So I know you, it was when you were launching Affluent um, the first time. And I remember just reaching out to you and saying, look, I've got this idea, you know, let's make this promo video for Affluent completely free of charge um you know we would love to do something like that and yeah we we did it and we we created like a great film that i think we're both really proud of like to this yeah. day i still watch that film back and yeah. you know we had a great time filming it like we went yeah. to greece like yeah, so many stories great. off the back of it and we'd never met each other you know and we built a relationship <laughs> off the back of it and i think like i'm such a believer in like good karma is you know, it, it, think, you know, good karma exists and yeah. doing the right thing is the right thing. And I feel like if you, if you offer value to someone, uh, you know, a lot can come off the back of that. Like I've got so much work from doing that for free for you mm. and giving you that value that I've, I've now been returned that value because of the amount of work I've got from not only from you, because I proved myself to you, yeah. but also from the people that have, you know, come to Hammy Media through your platform because they've seen that video. Yeah, for sure. And I think, I think it's ironic thinking about it that like the two people that have offered me immense amounts of free value uh, in, in the industry, like yourself and Joe, are the exact same two people who I have like the strongest relationships with in the industry too. Like it's, 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 it's kind of mad that like, two of the strongest friendships that I've built have come from that initial free value. That is, um, I've never actually thought of it like that. It's, yeah. it's weird. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just like, like Joe, you and Joe kind of like infiltrated, you like kind of forced yourself into a position through offering me value that I couldn't turn away. So how can I turn this away? And then you end up naturally just spending time with someone and then you're going to build a relationship if you're on the same level as each other. And you wouldn't be offering me value if you didn't think we we're on the same level anyway, because there's plenty of other people out there that you could. <laughs> So from that, we've built, I mean, we've, we've, we've had countless nights out together. We've had countless business chats. You've stayed around the house multiple times. Like we've built this relationship based on that delivery of free value. And even away from that, like I'm not saying to you guys, you need to, if you want to make some friends and go out there and do some free ads to someone, but the premise of that, like the psychology behind it is like, if you want to work for a client, you want to get big clients, you want to get yourself noticed by someone, just offer them something that they can't turn away. Give a bit of your time. 
And like the, the what can come from that is just goes way beyond that initial investment, it goes way beyond a couple of days' work that you may be putting in. And I think that's why so many people have like the whole trial thing messed up. Like when you're first starting out, if there's a big opportunity that comes in your door and like you need to drop your price or you need to offer a trial or whatever, I'm not saying you need to work for someone for months, but like if there's something you can do just to get yourself in the door by offering a bit of free value, like who cares about devaluing and all of this bollocks like it, it doesn't matter like it, it doesn't exist like only only your ego that only exists in your ego and because of some other guru online has, hasn't got the humility to allow That's you it. to do I, it i think it's like it's ego isn't it it's like the, when you first start your agency or when you're in the early stages of your agency you know you can't have an ego you know you need right. to do things that are slightly different to how others are doing them to be able to get that first break. Because as soon as your foot's in the door there, you know, that's when, you know, off the back of that, you'll get people coming to you once you've proven yourself in that. Because, you know, you must do, you must get that all the time, being someone with a platform and, um, you know, guru in the space. You know, people co con constantly like asking for things and you don't know what's kind of real and what's yeah. not. And, um, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I can, yeah, I can't, I can't count how many times someone asks for something but doesn't offer anything else in return. Like, the, interestingly though, like it's a shame because the guy we've already got a great email guy, but like someone again, someone offered a really great strategy. This guy, like I've seen actually two people do it now. Email marketers reach out and say, "I've already written you a an email script. Like, um, like, would you like me to send it over to you?" Now they probably haven't written it already, right? But they they would just they're gonna and I say, "Yeah, sure, send it over." And then and then they'll go ahead and they'll write like a, a five day email sequence, right? And then I'll send it over and I can test it out and see if it works. If it works, and I'll sign them up. Um, yeah. So, so, but like doing things like that, like offering like, and it's in a, in a way, it's like offering the free loom, like on on a on an outreach. Yeah, like exactly. In a small sense, it's like I've I've got some ideas for you. I've created a short video, and you send that over to a prospect, and they say, yeah, sure, send me over that, and you can get some free value. And in a small micro sense, it's the same premise. You don't have to offer your service for free for a month. Equally, if you get offered a great opportunity and there's a good client, good case study, don't turn it down. But it's in that micro sense, just if you give someone a little bit of something, then they'll give you so much back. What the thing about that as well is like what annoys me is that people sometimes have that approach and then they're that entitled to think that they sh just should get something in return. It's like it's like the whole value model, like you know, with your model on YouTube, like the whole point of that is give, give, give free value and then yeah. ask. So, you know, yeah. when you do have those things, it's not give, 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 give and then take. So, you know, you can't just do yeah. something for free for someone and then just expect something off the back of it. You need to, you need to, you know, do that for them, give them the value. And then if something positive comes off the back of it, it does. If not, don't cry about it. 100%. How many hours I have invested into this YouTube channel? Go through my channel and count how many call to actions there are. Like count. Yeah. There's probably like 10 call to actions in, through like hundreds of videos. Probably not even that. Like, so it's like, I don't expect anything in return, but I know based on human psychology, that's the way it works, full transparency. You guys are going to watch this. You guys will get value from it. You'll know that if I'm giving this much for you for free, what am I going to give you for cash? And then a few of you will then opt into that. And again, you will then be over delivered. And I think that's what everyone, the approach everyone needs to take in business. There's this weird ego when someone quits their job it's like i'm an entrepreneur now i am worth a thousand dollars a month on facebook ads even though i don't know how to run ads i am worth xyz i have these moral principles or whatever and it's bull it's bull bollocks oh, yeah. it's like this whole like concept now of like anyone can be an entrepreneur like all it takes is putting it in your fucking it's am i allowed to swear sorry <laughs> you can swear okay <laughs> it's just it's just getting this getting me fired up like it's it's when, you know, there's just this, this culture now of you're an entrepreneur and you're a CEO. As soon as you put that in your Instagram bio, it's like, you know, to be a professional footballer, you have to be a, you have to be a professional footballer. Like yeah. as an entrepreneur, you can be a fake entrepreneur by just putting it in your bio. You literally, it's a joke. It's a joke. And I think what it does is, I think if anything, what it does is just, it just damages people's mental health, like in, in all senses, because we have all these people that are starting businesses, Mr. Entrepreneur, Managing Director, CEO, like CEO is the worst. I'm the CEO of this business. Like, bro, you don't have a board. The CEO there's no, board. There's no board of your business. Like, where's your other C-level directors? Like, you're not, you're not the chief operating officer of nothing. So, but, but then other people see that and they see the fake lifestyle and they see everything else. And like, because, and then, and then it just damages everybody in the space because it has this knock on impact of like, I should be this these are expectations this person done it in three weeks when in reality like half the people that you're seeing who have made all this cash in a short period of time they haven't even made cash in the first place they just want you to believe they have based on who else they've seen 
blagging it as well. So it's, it's just a spiral yeah. of blagging. Exactly. It's like insecurity. Like most, most of the time, the people that are really flaunting that on online are those that can't necessarily afford it, but they're buying it with, with any of the cash that they've got to try and prove a point to, to others. So yeah. yeah, that's it. And like on that point, like there's no right or wrong. Like, you know, a lot, it's so easy to be an entrepreneur nowadays, but then again, if it doesn't work for you and it's not right for you, like it's not for everyone and there's nothing there's nothing bad about being, you know, the best number two in the world or the best number three in the world. There's yeah. no better or worse. The, equally, though, you don't have to even be the number two. Like if, for those people that are like, let's say, uh, I've forgotten the, the term when you have like an internal entrepreneur. Like, uh, I think you had you. I think you said the term recently, but like, you see like fractional COO or something like that. Uh, no, I did. not But there's a, there's a, a, a an intrapreneur. Somebody who's yeah. like internal to a company, but also has an entrepreneurial mindset. Now you don't have to like not be an entrepreneur full stop. You can still own 50% of an agency and do all of the stuff that doesn't actually involve building the company. You can actually just make sure you can over deliver and um, on service delivery, for example, right? So you can still own a good portion of a company about to do that. And it's okay to, to come from that. Like, like Tom, our, our, our Tom, our ad specialist, our first ad specialist, absolutely smashed it. First time he actually he came to us and he said, well, guys, I took the Affluent Academy. I realized it wasn't really for me, but I want to be part of your team. Let me let, let me let me be an ad specialist for you or whatever. We're taking them on. He's making huge amounts of commission. Like, And he doesn't have the motivation to, not that even the motivation, he doesn't have the desire to go out there and have to do it himself, but he can still be part of a huge agency with big prospects. It's a five-figure role. Like, And it's like... It's, it's following it's, the happiness at the end of the day. Like follow your mm -hmm. happiness. Like some of the happiest people in the world are those that have a nine to five job. They can switch off at the eight at five o'clock. They don't even have to think about work and mm -hmm. they're happy. They've got family, they're earning 40 K a year, whatever. And they're, you know, they're really happy. And that that's kind of with my agency, I'd always tried to follow that happiness. Like I didn't want to just scale quickly because it would look better or because yeah. I, I wanted to do it at my pace, which is why, you know, yeah for the first year or so I, I i worked a lot slower because i was happy yeah and that's what but that's why so many people there's there's people like yourself and like even myself like even though we are content creators we put content out there right we share so little of the work that we're actually doing and it's because we're actually busy doing the work like the agencies that are so loud because they're like constantly posting about this that and the other like those guys like you just don't have the time to do that right so like I, you have to, I suppose the moral for anyone listening to this and just hearing us rambling about people, like <laughs> the, the, the moral is like, you just need to keep in your own lane and just, just get the work done on your own. Like, don't worry about what the person next to you is doing. Don't worry about how many people are ahead of you. Like if you're part of the academy or you're joining the academy community, yes, it's great to be motivated by other people in the community. Yes, it's great to engage with that, but don't get caught up in, in, in the race. Like, because it's not about that. Like it yeah. happens for one person in two weeks, happens another person in two years but as you just need to stay in your lane and focus on your shit and don't worry about what you look like externally because that's not going to help you grow like there's there's so many agencies out there that are so public but in in reality like you you break down the business and the team and the way that the, the, everything's right it's a shit show so yeah. like yeah. it's so much better just to focus on on yourself like so many of these interviews that we do like from people that are like never engage in the community like although although like, like they're people like you you guys like engage like maybe once like a couple of months when like you got something valuable to add right but you're like and like and like you, you'll comment on posts or you'll join a q a every now and then like people but then like at the same time like you're super busy and i don't and i don't i don't expect any of you to because like you're you're running your agency and you're actually getting shit done like if you had time to post in the affluent academy three times a day i'd be worried like about what's going on do you know what i mean yeah um, i completely agree so it's i mean it's just one that you just need you just need to keep yourself in your lane what would what would be your best advice to people who are like looking to get into the space today because obviously a lot has changed over the last 12 months um what what would your be your advice be to those those people who are who are looking to join or get into the space like now I would say do it for the right reasons. It kind of comes back to what we were just talking about. Like, don't just do it because, you know, and again, this is a theme you massively uh, drill into to your community. Like, you know, it, there's no get rich quick scheme, right? Like, you know, hard work is going to be, uh, is going to win if it's <laughs> something you actually love doing. Like that mm. person that's doing something that absolutely loves it compared to the person doing something that doesn't, mm. you know, who's going to naturally work a lot harder? So find what you genuinely like, like try not to, you know, do it for the right reasons. 
don't be too money motivated. It, that's obviously important, but find where you fit into that. You know, take a step back and look at yourself and what you really enjoy doing because you know there's most probably a direction you can take in that in that service based business that can that can offer that. Yeah, hundred percent. And ultimately, you're only going to know what those true passions are when you actually get going when you start doing it. Like, it's, it's not until you sign your first couple of clients. Go on. Throw, throw as much like that's another thing. Sorry to interrupt. Just like throw as much shit at the wall and like see what sticks because and if you don't try, you don't know. You know, don't don't give up before you've started. Hundred percent. Yeah, and you can't just like do one thing. Just play around. Like offers different services, sign up different clients, like just mess around with it. Ultimately, like, and I said this so many times, like you literally cannot tell somebody the way to run their agency. Like you can give the, I can give people the framework. I can give people scripts or whatever. But ultimately when you actually start going, you find your own way. Like you find your own culture, you find what works for you. You find how you communicate with people. You find how you sell to people. And you're not going to know that until you actually just get going with it. But like you guys, you got to stay in your own lane. You got to just like, just, just, just do that shit. Um, Cool. Mate, well, do you have anything else that you, you, you wanna you wanna add to this chat? If not, um, I know you've got I know you've got a big video to edit for. for, for yeah, us tonight, yeah. So. This will it be out by the time this? Comes it will out? be out by the time this interview airs. So well, I hope everyone likes. We're we're working on something special. Um, and you well, well, no, they would have seen no, it. It's so. already out. Yeah. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the I hope you've enjoyed <laughs> two launch and and buy it now. <laughs> Um, no, I think one last thing I'd like to say, which was a massive learning for me, there's two things. I think one is don't hire too quickly. I think we brought on three people literally almost at the same time and being a small team where, you know, as much as, as much as we kind of feel, we know what we're doing now with the whole, you know, you can probably agree with this, you know, when you're when you're hiring and you're, you know, you're supposed to be managing people, you know, we're making this shit up as we go along to an extent, you know, we've never, I've never managed people before you, you're learning what works, what doesn't as you go, mm. um, you know, so bringing on three people at the same time, although I'd already managed three people by that point, bringing those, those three people on at the same time made it very hard to, to be able to focus that. And it was very overwhelming. It's, a, it's taken us a good three, four months to, to really get things in place because yeah. that is that management is a job in itself. You know, that's when you, when you're still doing delivery and, you know, running ads and then you're also managing, mm. you know, that's, that's uh, so I'd say just, just make sure you don't hire too many people in a, in a short space of time and learn as you go and how you manage. The other thing is like agencies really don't focus enough on uh, customer attention. Like that's mm -hmm. one thing we've learned, like so much of our revenue comes from cross-selling our current clients nice. and, you know, their, their circles and things like that. I think there's a stat, something like, um, you know, it costs five times more, um acquisition then retention and you know people are too focused and um you know um spearheaded on the idea of getting new clients in where they don't look after the current clients that they've got yeah. so that's another big one like really nurture and look after the clients you've got and then you know learn to cross sell to them that's so important actually we we had a call we had a call with a one of our longest standing clients, like two years have been with us now. Um, uh, we had literally called them like last week. They're on like the lowest retainer on our books. Like we didn't want to upset them. So we didn't really want to increase them, but we had to, they, they started asking us, like we, we scaled them up to a really nice level. And like, they started asking us, oh, we really want to start doing TikTok and, and email and, and can we do Snapchat for them and that? And we're like, okay, we can't keep doing this for like all this work. So we jumped on a call and we we, we moved them over to a 10% rise deal and they're already making them hundreds of thousands a month. And so overnight, I literally went from like a 2K a month client to like, like a 10k a month client but like they love us that much and we we're over delivering on value that much like, they must have known they must have known they had a great deal um but that like they it was a no-brainer for them i jumped on that call and it's just like they literally said to us like we will never leave you guys like you will always be and like they it all their main priority was taken away whatever they had with any external agency email and like they had someone on, on google they were like we we want to take that away and give it to you guys we want to just work with you guys and we will never leave you and i think no Nurturing those relationships and making sure you look after your clients 
is such an important way to scale your business and grow further. Like there's nothing worse than an agency that signs up loads of clients and then has, doesn't deliver good results for them or cannot deliver good results. For them. Don't even get me wrong. Not every business is you're going to be able to get good results for. Like in your industry with, with content, and like it's, it's, it's different, but I know you've got some ad clients as well. But it's, I think as long as your intentions are there to always over deliver to all of your clients, that's going to speak in volumes because the referrals and everything is what makes a business exactly. survive. Exactly. Like I like under promise over deliver. I know it's again a cliche, but it's jet is so true. Like we've only learned recently, like, you know, if we're doing organic social management, having the KPIs four posts a week and then do five, because then it's like, yeah, look, nice. we're, we're over delivering what nice. we're paying. You know, little things like that, you know, make a big difference rather than just putting in five. Yeah. As this institutional un- over promising and un- under promising and over delivering like Apple to this day, like still o- un- o- under promise over deliver. They do it on every single delivery yeah. on their website. I you order that. an iPhone, it will tell you three weeks. It'll come in two. You order anything from Apple, it and will how come. How good does that feel? It's it amazing. <laughs> it's so good. Like, but actually, I've got so used to it that I know I read it. And I'm like, oh, that'll come a week before. <laughs> but like, it's it's such a great way to leave a positive taste in the mouth of their customers. Like, and they they're a massive multi billion dollar company who still understands that principle. Like, under promise, over deliver. When I I spoke to a client new client we signed up the other day like this minute that we sent the contract they sent a message like saying oh can we like guarantee free x hours on this and i was thinking oh here we go now some other agency will be like yeah well sure we'll get free not actually like guarantee it like in, on the contract but like can i say for sure that they're going to make free x in the first month and another agency went, yeah sure we're, we're definitely going to do that and i was like realistically like i don't know like i'm you're, you're there was like a really niche product i was like there's no way of me telling you this i'm like you're basically asking me what the what the what, what, what's going to be my hand in poker like i don't know what's going to happen like really I, I, we can do xyz all i can guarantee is, is we're going to do the best that we absolutely can we're going to launch the best ads that you could physically have and no other agency will be able to launch better that's what i can guarantee you and like in that sense like i'm then i'm de i'm i'm dequalifying them i'm saying that like and, and i think people respect that transparency they love yeah. That. I actually love that. When I was actually filming with you last week, I remember you actually telling me a story about that. Like a client before you signed them up was was kind of saying, "We need to do this. We need." And you straight up, like a lot of people would blab in that situation just because they want to sign the client and be like, "Yeah, we can do that. We can." Mm-hmm. And already you're setting yourself up for failure. But you were straight up like, you know, yeah. I don't think that's possible. Yeah, hundred percent. It's not. It's not worth having that conversation. Like I always say to business owners, like I want to learn the ins and outs of your business. My priority is you being as profitable as profitable as possible. If that means me having a conversation with you and saying, "Look, this isn't going to work for you because of X, Y, Z. We need to change the website. We need to change the brand, and we need to try and get your manufacturing costs down. Whatever that may be." I always say to them, I will be involved in everything because my priority is you making as much money as possible. We're incentivized to make you as much as possible. So we get as much money from you as possible as well. I was like, I'll never lie to you. I'll never butter things up. Like, and, I'm, and we're very trans. It's like, like I said to you as well, when you're here, when we, when I get on a call, one of the first things to say to people is just so you know, I don't, we, we've built the agency to a position where we don't need to take on new clients. I will never say yes to working with you if I don't genuinely think I can help you. And straight away, they're like, fair. I okay, cool. That. Like, yeah. Yeah, we'll be using that one. We, I may, <laughs> I noted that one down. Straight yes. back to Hector. <laughs> <laughs> it works, man. It works. People yeah. love it. Like, and it's like, and I, 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 I'm like, I don't want that bad energy. You don't want that bad energy. No one wants that in their life. And it's just a nice, like, life breaker. And people are like, okay, fair enough. Like, I was. It shows re- it reaps confidence as well. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. We, 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 we had we had a we had a, a 17 minute close today like on on someone on a call and it was the same premise like they wanted some ads and we literally just had this huge confidence on the call and we just said look well i know we can and i was like well i'm not, to be honest i'm not even going to bother going for any script with you i know we can close I, I know that we can get you amazing results like it, what what do you expect from us for you to say yes and he was like well i just expect to get results i was like cool well this is one client that we've done xyz for bang and he was like cool close and it's like no no issues it's like 2k 10 percent. it's going to be a client that'll make loads of money doing like 100k organic a month but like we just have like this not cocky confidence it's a very humble confidence like yeah. i've got your back and i will not mess you over kind well, of that thing. sleazy sales tactic and i think like the thing with that as well is you know in the short term you agree like in the early stages of your agency you're going to probably be putting in way more effort strain rejection than you will later on in the agency yeah. and you know in terms of getting those results as well because it means then once you've got them you know it does it does the selling for itself yeah and this, this is all more of the reason as well for people to get like case studies as soon as they can at whatever sacrifice because 
because like some people will be listening to this be like okay jordan that's all well and good well you know exactly what results you can get and you know that you can do x y z like i didn't know that three years ago when i launched the agency i didn't have a clue i didn't know how to run a facebook ad when i signed up my first client i had no clue what i was doing i was completely blind i've only got this confidence from actually doing it and like like other people getting gain that confidence within six months other people quite gain it within three months whatever like you just have to get the case studies and the only way you'll gain this confidence is when you actually start getting results for businesses yeah yeah couldn't agree more couldn't agree more cool all right man well i'm if, if, if people want to like check out your socials i'll put links in the description i think i've got them in the old video anyway but like are we talking tiktok instagram is there anywhere else you'd like people to yeah check instagram and tiktok mainly youtube coming soon <laughs> yeah nice and if you see a picture of me and Jordan on Instagram in white robes, it's probably not Jordan or, or myself. <laughs> the <laughs> it's amount of like Jordan it's... Platy and Jordan Potu, <laughs> like a Forex trader. It's, or... it, it's, <laughs> it's yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely not us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank so, you for having me, mate. No, nah, no worries, man. It's a pleasure as always. I'll get this uploaded uh, next week. Oh, I don't know why I'm saying that on the recording. Well, guys, this is going to be uploaded now because <laughs> you're already watching it. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Guys, um, make sure you check out Lucas. He's a great example of, a, of an exceptional agency and he's only going to go up from here. So Lucas, thanks very much, man. Cheers, Jordan.